very much to the city of Atlanta. Thank you for the honor. And the Almighty God will honor all of you in return. And let me appreciate all those who have gone before me. The musicians tonight, they have been extra special. And the young man who brought the first message, uh, if it were in Nigeria, I would probably just have said, after that, what else do you want? <laughs> we we'll just say, we'll just pray and then go home. I think that that was wonderful. That was, that was wonderful. I'm delighted that I have somebody like that as my son. Uh, I miss my tomorrow is already settled. Let's give the Lord another round of applause. That was wonderful. That was wonderful. Actually, you should have given the altar call. Just give the altar call. My assignment on a light out program is just to come and give the Father's blessing. That's the way we do it at home. The, those who speak before me, they speak, make the altar call, uh, pray for the sick, do everything. And then in the last uh, five minutes or so, I come, I give the Father's blessings, and we go. Maybe America will learn from us. <laughs> but glory be to God, it's been wonderful. Very quickly, Mark chapter 5. I will read from verse 25 to 34. I will read very quickly. Mark 5, 25 to 34. Tells us that uh, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straight away, the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. And Jesus, immediately knowing himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and seest thou who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace and the whole of thy plague. Mm. Somebody's going to have an encounter with the light. Yeah. You see, in this story, we have a woman who had many problems. And you can relate to her one way or the other. She was sick. No doubt about that. She was bankrupt. She has spent all she had. She was in bondage. There was a force of darkness that was troubling her. Because what was supposed to be a thing of joy had become a thing of sorrow. If you're a woman and you reach a certain age, 
you begin to menstruate. And that's a thing of joy because it says that one day you can be pregnant, hopefully when you are married. But this thing started, and instead of stopping after four or five days, it went on for 12 years. The blessing had become a curse. Uh, and situation had reached a stage where she was hopeless because she had gone from one doctor to the other. They referred her. One doctor referred her to the next, to the next, to the next, until she had no money left. She was beginning to lose hope. And without any doubt, she was deep in sorrow. Then she heard that the one who is called the light of the world was passing by. And something told her, if I can have contact with this light, my problems will be over. All she had was a touch of the light of God. Her sickness was over. Her poverty ended. A bondage was destroyed. A hopelessness became hope again. And oh, she had joy. Tonight, as we cry to God at the appropriate time for the light of God to touch us, Number one, sickness will change to health. Yeah. But I need to say from the word go that the Bible says there was a multitude thronging Jesus Christ. But only one fellow got a miracle. We are many here tonight. Well, for Atlanta, you are not, you haven't done badly. <laughs> it can be only one fellow who will go home with a miracle. Okay, who is that fellow going to be? <laughs> when light passes by you, when just a ray of light of God touches you, your sickness can change to health. Because in Mark chapter 3, from verse 1 to 5, Mark 3, 1 to 5, the Bible spoke about someone with a withered hand. When the hand is withered, there's nothing the doctor can do about that. But when the light came into the temple and it shone on that particular person, the withered hand became whole again. I'm praying for someone here tonight. Even if your case had been declared by the doctor as incurable, you will have a new testimony. Yeah. When a ray of light touches you. Your bankruptcy can end suddenly. Yeah. Mm. 
In 2 Kings chapter 7, you can read it from verse 1 to the end. 2 Kings 7 from verse 1 to the end. A city had been under a siege. I have heard the prayers that have been prayed tonight. I don't know what it is that is uh, a kind of force of darkness that may be hanging over Atlanta. Because occasionally you have problems and you don't even know what's causing the problem. A city had been under a siege. And when a city is under a siege, it doesn't matter how hard the people in the city may try. They, they, they can't break the siege themselves. But then the man of God came and spoke and said, within 24 hours, the siege will be over. Not everybody believed him. In fact, one fellow didn't believe, and he said so. But once the word had gone out of the mouth of the man of God, there's nothing that can stop it. So that's why I've always advised my children. If you hear a word of prophecy and you don't believe it, just don't say so. Because what God has spoken will come to pass. But one may see it and not partake of it. I'm decreeing tonight that whatever seat may be in Atlanta is over tonight. <laughs> but more specifically, I'm speaking to someone in particular, I don't know who. Whatever siege is in your life, tampering with your success, that siege is broken tonight. As the case of one of my sons, one of my partners, came to a partner's meeting, and the word of God just came. He said, those who are in debt, in a way they can't explain it, God will pay their debts. Yeah. Well, that should be a word for somebody here. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know America leaves on credit. But do you know it's possible for the rest of your life never to borrow again? Yeah. So he, he, he jumped for joy. Ah, God, I don't know how you are going to do it, but I thank you in advance. That will be the testimony of someone. I think the meeting took place on a Saturday. Following week, Monday or Tuesday, the chairman of the bank that he owed sent for him. And they said, sir, we want you to tell us how you are going to pay this huge amount that you are owing. Just give us a plan how you'll be paying. <laughs> he said to them, sir, you know, and he was about 50 years old, you know if I'm paying you a million naira every day for all the days I've ever lived, I can't finish this debt. The next thing the chairman said is, in that case, the debt is canceled. <laughs> I'm using my authority as a child of the living God. In a way you can't explain, your debt will be canceled. <laughs> Like I said, this woman was in bondage, but a touch of light set her free. 
permanently. Because the one who is called the light of the world is also called the Lord of hosts. Is the one who has never lost a war. When it's on your side, there's no force of darkness that can hold you down. Because like someone told us already, when the light shines in darkness, darkness cannot overcome it. You remember the story very well of the madman of Gadara, Mark chapter 5. You can read it from verse 2 to 20. The man who had a, a legion of demons. Just one word from the Lord of hosts, the light of the world. And all the demons vanished at once. And the destiny of that man was fully restored. I don't know how many forces of darkness have been waging wars against you. But as the light of God comes in contact with you tonight, you will be set free. Yeah. And you'll be free indeed. Yeah. I said this woman, thank you, Father. The Lord asked me to tell someone that every reproach in your life we end tonight. <laughs> Daddy asked me to tell someone, he said, you've been constantly suffering from fear. You're just afraid, and you don't even know what, is, what you are afraid of. He asked me to tell you, whatever it is that is causing you fear, it's over now. <laughs> it looks as if uh, when it comes to engineering, Atlanta and Nigeria are partners. I told you this woman was hopeless. She has spent all she had. The doctors have not been able to help. But then the one that she came in contact with is the one that the Bible calls the king of glory. And Colossians 1, verse 27, Colossians 1, verse 27 tells us, when Christ is in you, your hope will be the hope of glory, not hope of shame. The one who is also called the light of the world is also the one who says, I am the way. You know, a man becomes hopeless when he can't find a way forward, can't find a way out of the situation is when, when all hope is lost, when there's nothing anybody can do for you again, uh, that's when you, we say the situation is hopeless. The reason you find people commit suicide is when they can't find any way out, when the situation is hopeless. It doesn't matter how hopeless your situation may be. Before you walk out of here tonight, God will turn the tide for you. Some of you have heard me share the testimony. I was traveling to a particular nation. When I arrived at the airport, one of my children who should be there to receive me wasn't there. And I asked, where is so-so-so? Oh, sorry, daddy, he's dying. 
is in the hospital. I said, can we pass by the hospital? They said, yes. So we got to the hospital. Very big hospital. In the hospital, we had a particular word. Whenever they find a case that is totally hopeless, they take somebody to that ward. It's as if they say, when they take you to that ward, they know that the next time you are coming out of that ward, you are likely to come out leg first. There were quite a few of them in that ward. You see, um, I think I can't remember what they call it in the medical term, but there is something that is in a man's body that uh, by the time it, it reads about nine or something, they suspect that that fellow has cancer. By the time it is reaching something like uh, 200, as they call it termina. By the time they took this, my son, to the hospital, his son was reading 4,000. So they, they said, they just took him to that room. And I went in there. I got permission. They said, well, you can't do any evil. Go in there. There's no hope. And I prayed for my son. And there were many others there. I didn't pray for them because in some of these nations of the world, if you pray for somebody who didn't ask you to pray for him, they can sue you. So I prayed for my son on a Saturday and I left. By Wednesday, he was discharged. But the miracle of it is that he was not the only one discharged. Everybody in that world was discharged at the same time. To show that it was not me who performed the miracle, because I prayed for only one fellow, but the light of the world followed me into the world and shown on everybody in there. That's why I can decree tonight that every one of you here, every hopeless situation in your life shall be overturned tonight. And then, just one more point, because they informed me that we have only till 12 midnight. That's why when I was enjoying the music, I was also looking at the time. <laughs> <laughs> it would have been okay if we sing till 12 midnight. I would just have a good excuse for not preaching. <laughs> This woman woke up that morning in deep sorrow when she was going to bed. She had what we call joy unspeakable. Because when you come in contact with the light, the Bible says in Psalm 16 verse 11, Psalm 16 verse 11, that in his presence, there is the fullness of joy. In the name of the one who called me, I am decreeing tonight that whatever has been causing you sorrow, you will never see it again. I'm giving you just one more testimony and then it will be time to pray. Because some of us have known joy. But very few of us know what is called joy unspeakable. I've told you this story before, at least some of you know. 
we were having a program like this, and we were about to end, and I said, everybody, talk to God, tell him what you want him to do for you. And as they were praying, I was praying too, because I, I need help from God. I don't know about you. And so I closed my eyes because that's how we were taught to pray when I was young. Unlike nowadays when you people pray with your eyes open. <laughs> Maybe you want to see Jesus passing by. <laughs> so I closed my eyes and I was praying. And all of a sudden I heard God say, son, open your eyes. I almost told him, daddy, I'm praying. But I obeyed, I opened my eyes, and he pointed someone in the crowd. I said, go and tell her, weep no more. So I went into the crowd, and it was a lady, and I tapped her by the shoulder. She opened her eyes, she was wet with tears. And I said, Daddy asked me to tell you, weep no more. I, I think I can say to somebody here in the mighty name of Jesus, no more weeping. And all of a sudden, she brightened up. At long last, God had heard me. God will hear somebody tonight. I think it was about a year later. And some people lined up to see me. And the first one came, told me what, what she wanted me to pray for. I did, the next one, and so on. Then suddenly came this woman. And she stood there. Yes, how can I help you? She opened her mouth and said, Jesus. Ah, okay. Yes, what do you want Jesus to do for you? Again, she said, Jesus. Ah, third time, Jesus. I said, please, there are still some people behind you. Finally, she said, you don't recognize me? I said, I'm sorry, ma'am. She said, I was the woman who was weeping that you said she will weep no more. She said, I've been married. She, I can't remember how many years. I that 12 or 15. And I've been married. I came to that meeting because my in-law had already told me if I did not give a child to their son within a year, they would chase me out of the house. They look at me now. Then I looked. On her right hand was a baby. On the left was another baby. <laughs> then I could understand why her joy was so full she couldn't speak. In the name that's above every other name. Before the end of this year. Someone here will know joy unspeakable. Because the light of God is passing by tonight. Only one thing that is very important that that woman did was that she grabbed the occasion. As soon as Jesus was passing by, she pushed her way through and touched him. You see, because the Bible says, and I've heard people say it again and again um, among those who have spoken before me, that, hey, don't miss your day of visitation. The Bible says in Isaiah 55 verse 6, Isaiah 55 verse 6, he said, you better seek the Lord why he may be found. Call on him while he is near. A meeting like this in Atlanta may never come again. Oh, 
there could be crusades and it could be other great men of God, etc., etc. But one thing is sure, none of us here knows tomorrow. There's none of us here, including myself, who can say specifically that even by this time of tomorrow, he or she will still be alive. Nobody can say that. We don't know tomorrow, but we know today. Today is our own. This moment is our own. We can grab the moment now. That's why when it is time for us to pray, I, won't, I don't like the way some of you pray like ladies and gentlemen. Forgive me. When you need a miracle, you pray like a lion or a lioness. After you receive your miracle, you can become a lady and gentleman again. And all of you are looking so dainty, looking as if uh, butter can melt in your mouth. You are pretending. Because if you get into real trouble, you will open these beautiful mouths. This is our moment. We must seize it. Like the woman did. The light of God is passing by tonight. You must make contact. Tomorrow might be too late. Which is why, first and foremost, before we do any other thing, if you have not given your life to Jesus... If you have not been saved, if you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, or you claim you are born again, but you are still living in sin, because the word of God made it clear, if you are born of God, you can't sin. Sin will be repugnant to you. If you are here and you know you are still enjoying sin, please seize the opportunity tonight. Run forward to this altar. Come and give your life to Jesus Christ. Let us pray for you that God will save your soul so that when we cry to God for light, the light won't pass you by. So any one of you who will want to give his or her life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to count from 1 to 10. Before I say 10, please make sure you're already standing before me here so that I can pray for your salvation and then we can pray for light. I'm counting now 1. <clears throat> 2. Don't wait for anybody. You might be the only one that God is talking about tonight. So if you want to give your life to Jesus, come quickly. God bless you. God bless you as you are coming. Three. And I, I, I can see some of you in the gallery. If you are coming from the gallery, you have to move very fast. Three. Four. And thank you, those of you who are clapping. Your hand will never wither. Keep clapping. Five. Yes, this is your day of salvation. Tomorrow might be too late. Six. Keep clapping. Keep clapping. They are still coming. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Seven. Yes, keep coming. God bless you. This is your day. This is your own moment. This is when your destiny is going to change for the better. Eight. Keep coming. Keep coming. That's 
We are moving towards the final countdown now. Hurry up. Hurry up. Yes, I can see two of you are coming from the gallery. Hurry up. I'll give you 10 seconds more. Nine. God bless you. You're, you're welcome. Keep coming. Keep coming. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Those of you that I can see there. Thank you, Lord. Okay, those of you who are on the way, keep coming. But those of us who are in front, talk to the Almighty God. Tell him, please save my soul today. Forgive all my sins. Just take over my life. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Go ahead, talk to the Lord. And the rest of us, please stretch your hands towards these people and intercede for them. Pray that the one who saved your soul will save their own souls also. Go ahead. Talk to the almighty God on their behalf. Intercede for them. For just one more minute. Anybody who is still on the way, you have to hurry up now. Because I want to pray for salvation. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. My Father, my God, I just want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you for these people who have come forward to surrender their life to you. Father, please receive them in Jesus' name. Have mercy on them. Forgive all their sins. Let your blood wash them clean. Please save their souls. Receive them into the family of God. And Father, I pray that from now on, anytime they cry unto you, you will answer them by fire. And let them serve you for the rest of their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Ah. I'm very happy to see all of you here tonight, those of you who have given your life to Jesus, and I'm making you a solemn promise as a man of God that from now on I'll be praying for you. So I'm going to need your names, your address, and your prayer requests. The counselors will collect, they will give me a copy, which I will take back to my headquarters, and I promise you I'll be praying for you. Congratulations. Okay. Just a moment, just before you go. We, we, we don't have much time now. So I want you to be part of the prayer. We're about to pray. You wait here. After I finish praying, the counselors will, will take over. Now, the rest of us, are you ready to receive light? The yes is no. <laughs> I want you to stand on your feet. I want you to take your mobile phone and switch the light on. The Bible says the just shall live by faith. We're going to do something as an act of faith right now. You're going to lift up your light and cry to the Almighty God. And say, Father, Father tonight, tonight, give me your light. Me your light. Go ahead, cry unto the Almighty God. Tonight, Almighty God, give me your light. Give me your light, O oh Lord. Almighty God, tonight give me your light. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now you're going to pray another prayer. You say, Father, Father from, now on, from now on, I will shine for you. Shine. Go ahead, cry to the Almighty God. 
And in the mighty name of Jesus, I am going to shine for you, Lord. From tonight onward, I'm going to shine for you. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Now, one more prayer before I pray for you. And you are going to pray by faith. You say, Father, Father. in the mighty name of Jesus, name of Jesus. I hereby command. command Satan. Take your hands off me. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. I have gotten the light of God now. Satan, I command you in the mighty name of Jesus. Take your dirty hands off me. Take your dirty hands off my children. Take your dirty hands off my business. Take your dirty hands off my life. Take your dirty hands off my marriage. Take your dirty hands off my family. Take your dirty hands off me. I command you in the mighty name of Jesus. Satan, take your dirty hands off me. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. There's one more prayer you will pray, but I want to pray for you before then. My Father, my God, I want to thank you for this evening. Thank you. Because you are the light of the world. Oh, I command, Lord God Almighty, that in the lives of all these your people, your light will be shining. In the homes of all these your people, people, let the light shine. Amen. In their places of work, let the light shine. Amen. In their churches, let the light shine. Amen. In Atlanta, let the light shine. Amen. My Father, my God, I pray that wherever they go now, forces of darkness will see them and run. Amen. I join my faith with theirs, and I command you, Satan, take off your dirty hands. Amen. Don't come near these people again. Amen. Don't come near their family. Amen. Don't come near their children. Amen. Don't come near their business. Amen. Stay away from them. And in the name that's above every other name, wherever you go, you will shine. Amen. You will excel. Amen. You will be top. Amen. You will never be beneath. Amen. You will never fail again. Amen. You will never know sorrow again. Amen. Sickness will stay away from your home. Sorrow will stay away from your home. Amen. Everywhere you go, your light will shine. Amen. So shall it be. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Well, wave your light. Let's make the devil mad. Go ahead. Shout a, <laughs> shout a big hallelujah. Just one more pr prayer, and this one, pray it with everything you've gotten. And say, Father, Father thank you for giving me light. Thank you for me light. Don't let my light become darkness again. Go ahead, talk to the Almighty God. Talk to the Almighty God. Talk to the Almighty God. <laughs> 